Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to the February Plane Talk. Um, this is actually Graves Golf um, February Plane Talk, and I want to welcome. This is a, the public forum we do every single month, and I want to welcome you guys all to the um, to the. Actually, it's February 2022 um, webinar for um, what we normally do in our instruction, and I bring this up because um, you guys, it gets we get very very busy this time of year. You know, we start doing our Octobers, November, Decembers, and things toned down for us. All of a sudden, February hits. And we've already been to two schools. We've had an Orlando school. We've had a Phoenix school. We've had a five-day school, a three-day school. I actually just got back from a short game school. And I actually got to spend some time out in Monterey, out in, in Cyprus, and did some work out there with a, with a student out there. So we've been jetting everywhere to get you guys instruction out there. But anyway, I want to welcome you to our February Plane Talk. And, and my name is Tim Graves. I'm one of the co-founders of the Graves Golf Academy. Um, Todd and I founded this company about 22 years ago now um, to teach the single plane swing of Mel Norman. And you know, and, We've grown in size. We've grown, you know, we've, I, I say that. We've grown in size and stature. And I, why I say that is because I was out this last week or uh, out in Monterey, and I was out there working with a gentleman out there. And he had one of his, by far, one of his best friends is Bryson DeChambeau. And he actually, I was there a few days after the Pell Beach Pro-Am. And he um, was talking about, you know, Jordan Spieth's family stayed at his house, and you know, he was very close to Bryson and all these different guys out there. And I, I had, had some really interesting conversations with them because, Five years ago, three, four, five years ago, you talk single plane and people were saying it's this weird thing that's on the side. I'm not sure why people do it or et cetera, et cetera. And now it's the vogue topic of conversation. I mean, it is the vogue, whether it's Bryson DeChambeau you're talking about or, you know, or the Brian Gaze or the people like that that you know, have swung, swung single plane for a long time. It's popular. It's now on the front of people's tongues. They're talking about it. It's, it's something people want to hear about. In fact, it's some, something that people bring us out to give them personalized instruction because they want to know more about the single plane swing. So it's not this weird thing that's in this closet in the background anymore. It is not anymore. It is by far a really in vogue thing that a lot of people want to do, and, and we appreciate that. And that's why we've become so busy. But anyway, what we're going to do tonight, so let's get back on topic here. What we're going to do tonight in plane talk is we're going to do some about fitting. We're going to talk about clubs in the bag. And it's going to be more about just fitting. We're going to talk about the, some of the new stuff that's out there, some that's very popular right now, and try to take some of those, some take care of some of those fitting questions for you all. I mean, we receive hundreds and hundreds of fitting questions and work with people, hundreds and hundreds of people every single day on fitting their clubs properly for the single plane swing. So we're going to go over that tonight, okay? And that's what we're going to cover tonight. Um, before we get into that, though, um, I want to get a couple announcements. Um, announcement number one is our summer school schedule is going to be released to the public March 1st. Right now, our schedule is out through the end. So the schedule that's out right now is basically through the end of, I want to say, April, 1st of May. Yeah. So it's through the end of April, 1st of May. That's the schedule that's out right now. And honestly, that schedule is pretty sold out. I think there's a couple spaces left in the short game school in Phoenix. Guys, we just finished one up. We got another one coming up in Phoenix. It's an amazing school. You want to talk about some scoring, getting your scoring better, improving your scoring overnight, get in our short game school. There's a couple spots open in the short game school um, in Phoenix, and then everything else is pretty full up for the winter, you know, early spring months. Now, the May schedule through the summer will be released March 1st to the public. The private members, our gold members, our single plan academy members, have already got the schedule, or you've got it in hand right now, okay? So if you're looking to come in into a Chicago, if you're looking to come down um, into, you know, Minneapolis, if you're looking to come to um, another Orlando school or Phoenix school, you're looking to come to one of those all over the summer, get in, get in soon. Those will sell out very, very, very fast. Um, so again, look at the school schedule. It's on our website. Get in that, and we can help you with that. That's the first announcement. Second announcement is the end of the month, February 28th, we have what we call the Online School 2.0, okay? And this is basically an in-studio online Help you guys at home school. It's like being at a school from a distance, okay? Um, now, this online school 2.0 is, is set up, and it's free to all members. So every single Plant Academy member, all the gold members, is free for you guys. So whether you watch it live or you watch it recorded, because we'll record it and put it on, on our on-demand app, you can watch it either way, okay? Anybody who's out there that's not a gold member, you want to either sign up for the school, you can pay to get in the school, or you want to join our membership, so you can actually see the school. What we will do is we have, it's basically two hours of instruction followed by a Q&A follow-up you know, follow on that. Um, it's going to be some short game instruction, long game instruction. You know, it's interesting. 
It's a lot of things that we see. You know, we're teaching schools now. We've got back into it. You know, we, over the winter months, you know, in the, in the Decembers and Januaries, it slows down for us. But as soon as the end of January, 1st of February hits, staff's going out, and we're seeing 20, 30 students a week. I mean, it's, it's school upon school upon school. So we like to do our online school, something like this, our homeschool, to bring up some of the things we're seeing in the field to help you guys at home, okay? And the drills we'll give you in the school, the questions we answer in the school is all set for you guys to work on your own at home, okay? But again, so members, remember, February 28th, Online School 2.0, non-members, you know, get on, get in our on-demand, get a membership or just sign up for the school. We'll have a lot of fun, have a couple hours of instruction that day. All right. So that's really the announcements for tonight. Um, now, the one thing I do want to bring up with this is that, and this is what tonight's topic is going to be all about, is I'm sure you guys out there are seeing a lot of the release of the new product. The, typically, the PGA Golf Show, the same as this year, happens at the end of January. At the end of January, the companies release their new product. So the drivers, Ferry Woods, hybrids, putters, everything. They release the product, the newest, hottest, best product that's out there. And that's when we start getting tons and tons and tons of questions about the product. But before we can go into the product or talk about the product itself, I really, we need to discuss what an ideal, perfect setup or an online fit is for you guys. So the first thing I'm going to do tonight, and even guys have seen this for 10 years, and people have seen it for 10 minutes, this is maybe some information you haven't seen before, stuff that really help you. So you really, I want you guys to understand this. Before I go into the product, which we have here tonight, I want to talk about what our general online fit is, or our general fit is for you guys. And then we'll start going from the putter all the way up to the driver and talk about the fit of those type of clubs, what's important in those clubs, and some of the newer stuff that's out there and the technologies in those clubs. And that's what tonight's going to be about, okay? So, First things first is let's talk about how we fit for the single plane swing. And the beauty of what we have, how we fit, it's based on our model, the Mo Norman model of our single plane system, okay? So, and you guys have seen us lately talk about this model a lot, and we've been talking about it in what we call the 360 golfer. The golfer that has the all-around good game or, the, or improved the entire game. You know, the 360 golfer involves everything from, you know, hitting the driver better to putting better to hitting the, you know, the irons better. You know, it's, it's where you enter into this model, but you've got to have the entire game to get better, okay? But the one constant about being a good golfer or a 360 golfer, as we call it, is you have to have equipment that fits your game. Think about it. the one constant between all golfers out there is they're going to go out with clubs, hit a golf ball towards a target. They got to have a piece of equipment in their hand. Well, the beauty of what we do is we can design a club for you that fits you perfect for the model we're teaching you, okay? Because what we have is we have a very specific model. We can tell you how far you're supposed to stand from the golf ball. We can tell you what your spine angle is supposed to be. We can tell you, you know, how much knee flex you're supposed to have. We can tell you your spine tilt. We, we have all that very specifically in the model, okay? And it's very, and it's a constant throughout the model. Now. We also understand that there's some taller people, shorter people. Some people have shorter legs, taller legs, longer legs, you know, different size people. So clubs will fit different individually, different individuals differently, if that's make that sound bad, but they'll fit an individual different based on their size, but for our model. So what, basically what we can do is you can get us your fittings, your height, your arm length, which is your wrist to floor measurement, your hand size. How far you hit particular irons? You know, we have a series of questions for you guys in our fitting form. We can take those questions that you fill out. We can take those answers that you give us. We can then put it into our model for the ideal swing, the ideal single plane swing, and get you a club that fits you perfect. Everything from the part of the driver. Now, understand, this is a club that's going to fit you perfect for the swing that you're working towards. And that's the key. Because if you're trying to make changes, guys, we're an instruction-based company. I could sell you a club today. I could fit it to your swing today. And let's say it's a big over-the-top swing. It's a big slice swing. I can get that toe of that club way up in the air so that, so that you're, it's going to fit that big old slice you're hitting, okay? And it'll work for you today. But as you're trying to make swing changes, as you're trying to get closer to the single-plane model, as you're trying to get better and better, which is what we do, that, you're going to work away from that club. That club's not going to fit you anymore, okay? 
And it's going to be, if that club doesn't fit you anymore, it's extremely difficult to make changes in your swing. In fact, I'm almost getting to the point where it's almost impossible. Because think about it. If you had a club that's two or three degrees upright, okay, to fix your bit, you to, to go, you know, to, to take care of that big old slice you got, the big old top move, and all of a sudden you start working with us for a couple of weeks, and you're getting that club better on plane, it's getting more under, and you're swinging it better. Well, that big old upright club is going to heel dig, and it's going to pull left every single time. And not only will it pull left, it's going to make a shock when you hit the ground that's going to hurt your elbow, hurt your shoulder, hurt your neck, hurt your back, because the club doesn't fit you. So the principle of what we do is we're going to help you guys get a club or clubs that fit you perfect for the single plane swing you're working towards to allow you to make changes much, much easier and actually swing the club much easier because it is much easier to set up the ball properly when you've got a fit club. It's much easier to get the club on path properly when you've got a fit club. And we'll talk about that. We will break this down tonight and we'll talk about this. But the first thing I want to do here, and I'm going to draw something for you guys, is really the model itself, okay? And remember, we talked about the 360 golfer. Well, this is the ultimate accelerator to become a three, faster or a better 360 golfer, a better 360 single plane golfer. This is the ultimate accelerator. And we call it basically pouring gas in the fire, okay? And I'll show you what I mean here. So the first circle we have here, okay, is what we call geometry, okay? So it's geometry. And what geometry is, is I can take geometric figures of your height, your arm length, and the way we set up over a shot, the distance to the ball, the angles we create, the angle we should create in our back, the angle we create from our shoulder to the club head, the distance from our toe line to the club head. There's angles there. I can use that geometry and I can create or get clubs to fit you perfect because we have the geometry of our single plane swing, okay? So number one is I use geometry. That's the G. Okay, so G right here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an assessment. Okay, here's the A. And what an assessment is, is I'm going to take your individual fit. So, how tall are you? Your wrist to floor measurement, your arm length, your hand size. How far you hit irons, just like we just stated. I can assess what you send me and fit it into our geometric equation using the third thing here our single plane model, okay? And there's the S. So I have our single plane model, I have an assessment, and I use geometry, there's your gas in the fire. And I can use that system right there of the geometry with assessment, use our single plane model, use that, work individually with you, by which you submit me, 99% of the people submit this online to us, we never, 99% of the people we fit for clubs, we never see in person. I can take that rare, that right there, and we can design and build clubs that fit you perfect for the system or the single plane model that we are teaching, okay? And this is the ultimate accelerator because what it comes down to is if you're trying to make changes in your swing, you're trying to get better, everything, if you don't have a piece of equipment that fits the model you're working towards, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to make changes. Now, you might make some changes, but you're going to slow up the process dramatically. That's why we talk about pouring gas in the fire. You want this fire to go and you want to make the changes, the equipment has to fit you perfect. Everything in that bag has to fit you perfect. It's also what I call taking all the excuses out of the bag. In fact, the last newsletter I just sent out, which was a couple weeks ago, I sent out and I attached in there because I get calls about this all the time, the article I wrote that's called Taking Excuses Out of the Bag. Now, folks, the last thing I want, I mean, I got a bag. I set my bag here. I put it in the first, you know, back of my cart. And I go to that first tee. I want every piece of equipment in that bag to fit me perfect. I want my driver to fit me perfect. My hybrids, my irons, my wedges, my putter. If they don't fit me perfect, that's defeating. I'm going to go out on this golf course, and that's a, that's a defeatist attitude. There's no way. I want the last thing I want to worry about. There's enough to worry about in the golf course or on the range or when you're practicing. The last thing I want to worry about is does my piece of equipment fit me for the swing I'm working towards or working on or the swing I'm, I'm actually swinging, okay? So when I take, talk about take excuses out of the bag, I want the equipment in that bag to fit me perfect for the swing I'm using and working towards, okay? 
So that's what I call it. So I wanted to make sure you guys understood that. We use the geometry of the single plane swing, the geometry of the angles of the body, okay? With the assessment of you individually. So we assess you individually. Because everybody has different arm lengths. Everybody has different hand sizes. Everybody has different heights, okay? They're all different. But we can take that, use our geometric equations with our single plane model, and we can come up with a club or clubs that fit you all perfect. And that's what we do, okay? And folks, I've done this now for 20 years. Obviously, it's becoming more and more popular. I used to do four or five assessments a day. Now it's up to 40 or 50 a day at times. In fact, sometimes it's even more. Um, it's grown exponentially, which means, shows you the popularity of the single plane swing, but also shows you the understanding of people out there understanding the importance of having properly fit equipment. Now, the second thing I'm going to go, and this is going to talk for two seconds here, and then I'm going to bring James Bell in here because he's a master fitter with Graves Golf, and he's been doing this for actually longer than I've been doing it. But before we get to James, I want to talk about this for two seconds. The number one question or the number one, I guess, is a comment I get is people will call me up and say, I'm going to go down to this place and go get fit for a set of clubs, or I'm going to go to you know, this, this warehouse and get fit, or I'm going to go to this, this entity and get fit. I mean, I'm not going to bring up names, but you guys know them. You see them advertised on TV or you see them in different places. And they say, I'm going to go down there and get fit for clubs, okay? And then I'm going to send you those fittings. Well, folks, that's great, but they're not fitting you for the single plane swing. They have no idea how to do that, okay? Proprietary reasons, we have the fit. We can do this. They don't know. You, I'll tell you what happens 90% of the time. You walk in there, you're trying to set up like a good single plane golfer, and that person fitting you goes, man, you're, you're, you're kind of far from that ball. Why, why aren't you bending your knees? Um, you know, what, what's going on? And, they're, and so they look at you like, okay, that's not quite what we normally see. Guys, that's a conventional fit. So whether you're going to your local pro, you're paying a lot of money to go down here, you're spending a weekend to go get fit for club somewhere. Now, if you want to send me that information, that's great, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to take. I'm going to take, they measured your height. They measured your wrist and floor measurement. They measured your hand size. Maybe they got, you know, how far you hit some irons or some club end speed. I'm going to take that, and I'm putting it right back into our geometry or single plane model. I don't care if they tell you, you need a club that's four degrees upright, and you need a club that's, you know, two inches shorter. That doesn't matter to me. They're not fitting you for our fit. They're not doing that, okay? That's, so remember, when you go somewhere else, they're doing a conventional, traditional fit. We suggest 26 inches from a six iron. That's what we tell you should be, okay? Toe line to ball. We tell you 36 inches from a driver. We tell you you should have a 45 degree spine tilt when you're over your driver. I can tell you the geometry every time. That's not what they're looking at. They have no idea about that and they don't care, okay? The other thing is, is that 99.99% of the time, they're building a club to fit you for your swing today. Well, guess what? We're trying to improve your swing every single day. We're trying to get you to the ideal single plane model. I want you swinging like Mo, you know, eventually doing it, just swinging just like Mo. I want you to get to be the best ball striker ever. Well, unless you get a club that fits the model you're working towards, you're not going to make the changes, okay? Or it's very, very hard. And they have no idea how to do that, okay? So I'm not bashing them. I'm not, I'm not talking down to them. There are some great club fitters out there but they're not fitting you to our model or our system. And that's the beauty of what we do. Take excuses out of the bay for single plane swing for you, okay? So now, hopefully that kind of explains quickly a little bit about throwing gas in the fire, the accelerator, and how we fit in our model, okay? A little bit about that. Now, we have done webinars in the past that literally show you guys, and any guys would like you to reference them. There's some webinars that shows you how to take your wrist to floor measurement, tells you how to get your height. You know, things like that. There, we have some very extensive club fitting webinars and some club fitting videos out there on that. But and I'm not going to go into those specifics tonight, okay, because you can look online and see those. You can go and look at our form online. It's self-explanatory. <clears throat> what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to bring James Bell in and bring James in. And every time I bring James in, he makes me look short. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really not that Hi, short. Boss. He's just tall, <laughs> okay? But I'm going to bring James in. And what we're going to do tonight is, is we're going to talk about working the putter up the importance of the fit of each club, and then talk about some two new technology in those clubs. And I'm going to give you a little history about James. James has been with us for how many years now? Four and a half. Four and a half years. And I kind of pulled James away, and I'll tell you, I kind of stole James. The best thing I can do is I kind of stole James. Best way to put that. Yeah. James is working at the course that we have. We had our academy. Hey, but what I knew about James is he had done fitting for Callaway. He was actually a master Callaway fitter for how many years? 18. 18. But at that same time, he fit 
And what, you, what, what clubs have you fit, been a master fitter for? Just, uh, Cleveland, Ping, Mizuno, Titleist, yeah. Cobra. Yeah, this on. List Bridgestone. goes on. I mean, but this was the guy who would travel around the country. It was Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas, Northern, Northern Texas. Texas. Yeah, he'd travel around there, and he'd work for the reps doing demo days. So he's the guy you see on the range. He'd come out there, he'd have bags and bags of clubs, and he'd be fitting you up for all, all these different clubs. That's what he did. Well, he's also United States Golf Teaching Foundation certified and trained. Master teaching Ma- professional. Master teaching professional. So when he was working me on the counter in the shop, I was like, okay, you're, you're taking green fees here, and you're selling socks. I mean, you're wasting your talent, bud. I mean, I mean, I was like, so I poached him. <laughs> so I yeah, like, we, we had many talks. About yeah, we that had many, before. many talks. And I was like, I was like, you need to use your talent, bud. You need to use your talent. And so, and at that same time, he was still doing demo days for Callaway. So I stole him from Callaway and stole him from the golf course. And now he's with us full time. Good or bad, he's with us full time. I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a happy camper. It's <laughs> he's, he's good. A, he's a great guy. But extremely talented when it comes to technology of equipment, keeping up with technology, and obviously the fit. Um, extremely talented. And he also, now, he actually runs our trade-in, trade-up program for Graves Golf. And that's one thing that before we get into the topic here, and we, when we're going to rock and roll on this, is the one thing I will tell you about if you work with Graves Golf. Number one, we're going to give you, we're going to match all industry pricing or give you lower pricing. We are able to give introductory offers and do a lot of things with clubs that the general people, the general public out there, can't do. The general golf industry can't do. We're able to do that. It's due to our numbers, our size, and just to be real honest with you, we have a lot of pull in the golf industry because the amount of equipment we sell is the best way to put that. Second thing is, is that we're able to give additional trade-in bonuses when you trade in equipment towards new equipment. Now, I really hadn't talked about, I wasn't going to go into this topic yet, but we'll talk about it for two seconds. Guys, when you trade in equipment, let's say you have an older driver, you want to trade for a new driver. When you trade it in, you send us what you tell us what you have. <clears throat> we submit that list to with the new clubs that we order. You keep that club, right? They keep it until they, they get keep it, it until they get the new clubs. You don't send in your trade in clubs before you get your new stuff. People are very concerned about that. They think, oh, I'm going to order new clubs to be without clubs in my hand for a week or two or maybe longer. No, you keep your old equipment, your trade in equipment. You keep it all until you get the new stuff. When you get the new stuff, you box up your old stuff. We send you directions. You send it in. Very simple. In fact, James has videos on that. Very, very, very simple. We do thousands of trade-ins a year. James does thousands of trade-ins a year. I was going to say we? Yeah, yeah. James does thousands of trade-ins. Very simple process. But I want two things to know. We give you extra value for your trade-in clubs. Depending on your, Guys, if you're a member of the Gold Academy, you get up to 50% extra value. You get a, a lot more money for the trade-in clubs than the industry normal than the industry golf industry offers. So you email us and you say, I have this driver. Maybe it's an old tandem made driver. And you went down to your local pro shop or you went down to you know Champions Golf or whatever, and they still give you 100 bucks for that. That's what the national the industry is. And there's industry rate cards in this. Sure. There's national rate cards in this. We'll give you up to 150 bucks for it. We'll give you up to 50% additional bonus for your trading club. That's that's what we do. If you're members of the Gold Academy, if you're Single Plane Academy members, if you're a gold member, you get the highest trade-in values plus our additional highest bonuses out there. In fact, a lot of people trade in clubs every year and basically pay for the membership. I mean, it's, it's that simple. And I mean, the shipping label. And sh- yeah. Oh. And then the last thing is, is that we actually, you can, we have a link. James has come up with a link through Callaway, or it's a trade-in, a trade-in group, actually, that you can get a very cheap shipping label to send your clubs back. So everybody thinks it costs 100 bucks to send these clubs back in. You may have 20, 30 clubs now. You get a shipping label that's five, 10 bucks. I mean, 541. Yeah, but yeah, it's a cheaper, it's a label that is supplied. We send you directions on this to send your trading clubs back. Hadn't, t- hadn't planned on talking about that yet, but James went up here every day. Up. Yeah, James showed up and we, we've got 20, 30, 40 trade ins every single day that he's dealing with. So, guys, anyway, trade ins, very easy. We give you additional bonus for trade in. If you're a member of the Gold Academy, we give you a lot of bonus, extra bonus for trade in. A lot. You will see. I have guys that trade in a thousand dollars worth of clubs, and they get like fifteen hundred dollars when they get their bonus added on. It's crazy the amount they get. It's guys, okay? But we'll work with you individually on in that. Okay. So let's get into fit. Well, I want to get into the fit tonight, and I want to work our way up. Okay. So first things first is we're going to talk about the putter, and guys, we want to keep this simple because we'll have other webinars and just putters themselves. So I don't want to go too much depth in this. But when the putter is in your hand and you have a putter, 
The putter must be fit for you for these characteristics. Number one, length of the putter, how long the putter is. Number two, we need to get the grip size. Got to match your hand size. Number three is the lie angle of the putter, okay? Number four is the maker model. It must be face balanced. So when you have a putter, if that toe goes down, that's going to arc the putter. Our model, we try to keep the face square as long as possible. So we're getting your face balanced putter, okay? Fifth one, I don't know if I said line, but line. Will I say line yet? Okay, the fifth one is going to be the way the putter looks and the alignment aids that are on the putter, okay? Now, the highest technology putter out there is the Stroke Lab putters that Odyssey are making. And I'll have James talk about you for a couple seconds on that because he's, he's kind of my technology expert on this. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the biggest thing with the shaft differentials right now is through the years, the heads have gotten a lot heavier. So what ends up happening is with a heavier head with the steel shaft is the weight tended to move down towards the head. What ended up happening now is you make a spot putting stroke and the head starts to get away from it. It, it. The head wants to pull across. Next thing you know, you're casting your putter. And we already know that if your hands aren't leading and you're casting, you're, in, you're into chaos. So what Callaway has done, they've worked with their engineers and they've come up with this stroke lab shaft it's a biometric shaft. You look, you've got steel here and you have a graphite up here. And by taking the weight out of the shaft, they put a, a I think there's a 40 gram is the weight on, on the backside here, counterbalanced it a little bit, but it's moved the center of gravity and the balance point of the putter closer to your hands. So that allows you a more consistent stroke. The putter doesn't want to try and make you cast right. anymore. Right. More consistent stroke. Basically, and so what you said there in those student layman's terms, because you can, you're going to hear the technology going here, the, this technology guy. What happened is, is the putter heads are getting bigger and bigger, mallet size heads. Right now, it's been shown, you can guys see my videos I've got online on this, 80% of tour players are using a mallet type head. In fact, I think this year it's almost up 85%. So the mallet type head is, is, is in vogue. The reason is, it makes the sweet spot bigger. You're going to hear us a lot tonight talk about MOI. And that's moment of inertia at impact, okay? All, every time we say MOI, think sweet spot. MOI means sweet spot. The biggest sweet spots on putters in golf are the stroke lab putters, okay? So what they've done is they've increased the size of the sweet spot. They've taken weight and put it on the extremes of the putter to give it much better feel, which creates a better stroke with bigger sweet spots. And that's what they've done. So all this fancy technology and the shafting, putting weights on the end, is to make, basically make the putter feel better in your hands gives you better stroke and feel, increases the size of the sweet spot. Yep. Okay. Another thing with the, the MOI, when you're looking at it, it's how resistant the club is to want to twist. Right. Take an old blade-type putter, really toe-heavy, the toe hangs down. Just hold it barely in your hands and tap the center of the club face. And you'll see the line on the top of the putter may not be exact where the center of gravity is. So you'll tap there and you see the toe start to waver right. one way or the other. And as you start to move off the center, that little tap gets bigger or the movement gets a lot bigger with the same size tap. So that's telling you right there that the putter on these off-center hits wants to twist and, and get away from and, you. And here's the interesting part. I'm holding this thing, barely holding this putter right now. Just, and you guys can do this at home if you've got this. And I'm hitting the center of the putter, and it's not even moving. I mean, it's just dead center. Now, I go off-center. It's funny. It stays square. It, it stays square. Now, it I go, go way to the toe and way to the heel moves. But you guys, you never hit a ball there. But I go a half inch off, half inch, it's not even hardly moving. It's not moving at all. And that's where we hit the ball. Right. That's We're moving I, all over the right. club face so, at half inch. Guys, nobody, even the pros don't hit the sweet spot every time. There's no way. You hit a quarter inch, a half inch off, this thing stays square. Well, that's what you want. Whereas you put a blade putter or one that doesn't have a big MOI and you go slightly off center, the thing's twisting all over the place. So you guys can do that with your putter at home. You'll see. Tap on it. You'll see that. That's what these are designed to do. That's the technology they're putting in this putter to keep the face square longer to keep it what? So, guys, you miss the center a little bit. You're still going towards the hole. It's not shooting off to the sides. And the other thing it doesn't kill is you don't lose the distance. Right. That's the big thing That's also. the big killer right because there. Because you got a 20, 25-foot putt. You hit slightly off the toe or heel of a normal putter, not a higher technology putter. You may cost you five feet. And all of a sudden, you, got, you went from being two feet short to seven feet short. You, got, you follow me? We got trouble. That's just, So, the off-center hits help you with the speed control dramatically because of the big MOI. Um, the other thing on the putter, though, and understand the big thing we see is that you've got to get the right length and you've got to get the right grip size. If your grip size is too small, you're going to death grip this putter and you're not going to get good feel on it. The, sec the second thing is, if it's too, this is a perfect example. You've got an example here. James are the perfect example, and James doesn't understand <laughs> this, but this is why we work so good together. Because his clubs don't even get close to fitting me and my clubs don't get close to fitting James. 
So this putter fits me perfect. So if I sit in front of you and I get my arms hung down perfect, my elbows are next to my side and I'm very comfortable in this putt. Now, I take James's putter, which is about three inches too long for me because it fits him. Now, I go on this putter. Number one, I can't get underneath my eye line. Number two, my elbows are going to flare out every time. So there's no way I can get the ball in the proper position. I can't get in the proper a, a geometry for our single plane model here. I can't get in this with the part that's too long. It's going to get too far out. And then when it gets too far out, the toe's going to come up. I'm going to arc the putter. My elbows are going to flare out. It's not going to work. So think about that. Excuses out of the bag. Part of the fits me perfect. I just set up and I go. Part doesn't fit me perfect. What do I do? Choke down, not choke down. Do I go to the same spot? Doesn't work. Lie angles off. Doesn't work, folks. Okay. And that's the first thing in putters. Now I'm not, that's probably in depth as we want to go in putters tonight. We'll we'll do some putting videos. We've done videos before. We'll do some straight putting instruction that we talk about the fit later. But I do want you to understand it's critical to have the properly fit putter. Now, it's so critical. You can go on our website, and I have a thing. There's a club fitting form and a putter fitting form. Okay, it's right. It's just a drop down on our website. You can go click on that putter fitting form, fill out the thing, send it in. I will give you exact putter fitting recommendations and give you the putters that we actually recommend for it. You can go in there and do that, okay? Now, guys, if you have any problems finding these forms, okay, and, I, and I'm doing this for you guys at home, or it's all on our website under club fitting, custom club fitting, real bonormangolf.com. Custom club fitting is very easy to find, but if you can't find them for whatever reason, or if you want copies of your fittings be done before whatever, just email me at timg at gravesgolf.com, timg at gravesgolf.com. Email me, and I'll get you pointed to the right directions, okay? I want to get make sure we know that. I'll remind you later, but I'm going to do that in the middle. All right, next thing. So let's talk about some wedges, okay? So we got wedges. Guys, we start working our way up in the bag. Wedges must fit you for length, Lie angle, shaft flex, grip size, critical, okay? Now, the one biggest thing that people don't understand about wedges is how critical the lie angle actually is in wedges. It's beyond critical, and here's why. Guys, it's critical for every club in your bag, but wedges is even add-on, and I'll tell you why. Because a wedge, you're going to swing. Let's say you normally swing a club. Let's say you hit your 9-iron 100, uh, let's say 110 yards. That's what you hit your 9-iron. That will correlate to about... 75 miles an hour, okay? About 70, okay? We can give you those, we can give you that later, but so it's, anyway, we can figure out club head speed by how far you hit shots. Well, let's say, so now every time you hit a nine iron, you're hitting that thing 105, 110, maybe you catch it one time, it goes 115, but you know, on average it's 110. Very seldom are you going to hit that nine iron less than that speed. Well, here's the deal, because if you are, you're going to go to a wedge, or if you want more, you're going to go to an eight iron. But with your wedges in your bag, you're going to be hitting them, you know, I got a 40-yard shot, a 50-yard shot. I'm going to chip this. I'm going to pitch this. I'm going to hit this one in the bunker. It's the field clubs. It's the ultimate field clubs. So you're going to choke down sometimes. You're going to come to the end of it sometimes. You're going to swing it half sometimes. You're going to swing it three-quarters sometimes. You're going to swing it full sometimes. Well, here's the deal. You swing a wedge, half speed of a normal full swing, and you dig that heel, that thing is going to fat chunk shank pull every single time. <laughs> It's going to be because if the lie's too upright on it, dig the heel in, that club's not going through the ground. You're, it's going to kill your acceleration. You know, yeah. And the other thing it's going to do, too, Tim, we haven't even talked about what it's going to do, the face angle. Oh, face angle will get crushed. Because what ends up happening is you have to think about the geometry of it, and you're not dealing with a flat surface anymore that's sitting here. You're dealing with an angle. Here we have a 60-degree angle. I don't know, this is going to be hard to see. But then all of a sudden, I bring the toe up in the air, and now my face isn't pointing at my target anymore. It's pointing left to my target. So we see more people now. Oh, here, oh, look at you. <laughs> so Swing here it we down go. here. Can you yep. focus down here, Keenan? Where are we at here? Yep. There. So all of a sudden, I get set up here, and now I'm going to make this fine, delicate shot. And I try to get the club face flat. I don't anymore. And, and all of a sudden, it's now. pointing at Tim. Let's go down so the line. I'm going to go down over. You get down the line, the line view yep. here? He just, put, just turn this way. I'll no, turn this way. way. You want to go down? Uh, the other way. Right there you go. Oh, okay. I'll be quiet. There you go. Okay. Great. Right. So here I am. I get on a nice setup. I got yep. my club faces square. They yeah, let's don't do fit this me. One. This is amazing here because this is all clubs. We're going to talk about this. So look at this right here. There's his line. You and see that, that and line that's here? indicative right there. I love this. Right down the line. That's indicative right there of a dead straight shot right down the line, line where that fits. Now, he's going to put. He's going to pretend this club's too upright and watch what happens. He oh, puts, no. He, what's that? Now, all of a sudden, he gets too upright and where did they turn? Went straight inside. In fact, if it's two or three degrees upright, it's there. It's there. 
He put it straight off to the left. That's, that's what we call the heel dig. So you wonder why you're pulling it. You wonder why, and eventually it'll pull so bad it'll roll into the hosel and shank. You want to know that? Most of the time with wedges, it's lying. Okay, it's lying. And, and we'll see it. You'll be out there chipping. We just finished a short game school, what, two days ago? Right. What's today's Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. Two days ago. We've got uh, the students out there chipping, and you see them set up, and they go, oh, my clubs were fit perfectly. You know, my local guy did them, and you see them set up, and they're hitting a chip shot, and the ball's going left. 10 feet, 15 feet left of right. their target. We're right ahead of golf. Right and here. you walk up and say, you know, I hate to tell you this, but your wedges don't fit you. Right. And you start there and it just breaks my heart to do that. But yeah, because, because again, they had the a equipment. local guy fit him for a very upright swing with the toe that's up in the club yeah. for a slice. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to fit you for this model and get wedges that fit you perfect. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get the line go the wedge. The second thing is on your lower wedges in your bag, your sand wedge, your lob wedge, we want to get a forged type metal. We want to get a soft metal to create spin. Okay. And the best stuff out there right now, the ones that we deal with the most, is the Jaws full toe wedges. And the reason we do that is because it's got extra spin on the face. It's got a higher toe. The full toe wedge has got a higher toe that when a ball rises up on the face a little bit in some higher grass, it still gets weight behind it and creates the maximum amount of spin. And that's the biggest thing. Guys, we're trying to create spin, 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 spin on the wedges. When you're chipping, when you're pitching, when you're hitting that bunker shot, we want spin. If not, the ball's near the green, just go. We want spin. The way you do it is you get a softer metal that can create that spin. Then that last, the next thing on that is we want to get a weighted shaft. So the lower wedges in your bag, your sand wedge, your lob wedge, or we're going to keep stealing those for everybody because we want to get weight in that. Guys, you swing these at the slowest speed in the bag. We're doing the chipping, the pitching with these clubs. We want to get weight. The last thing you want to do is walk in a shot over a high rough or in a bunker and have a graphite lightweight shaft in there, you'll never get the club through the, you never get the, club through the, the grass, through the sand. It'll kill the shot. We had a couple ladies this yeah. weekend. It's graphite perfect example. Shafts. We literally had a short game school this last weekend. We had ladies that sat in the bunker. We had like five ladies in the school. They're sweethearts. They go in the bunker, and two of them had graphite, graphite. shafts. They had graphite sandwich. We hadn't fit them before. So they, we never seen these ladies before. They came in. They said, go in the bunker. And they're trying to get the sand out of the bunker and get the ball out of the bunker with this graphite shafted club. There's no chance. And they're literally swinging as hard as they can. So literally five minutes into it, we're saying, stop, stop, stop. We take one of these wedges. We hand them a wedge. We say, now, the only difference between that wedge you got there and this wedge, the main difference is the weight in the shaft. It's got some weight. The second thing is it's got a little softer head on it so you can get a little more feel. Wasn't the first swing, obviously, but all of a sudden, a couple swings into it, they could get sand out of the bunker. They could get the ball out of the bunker. They had a chance because of the weight of the club. So it, and you see the big spot that you yeah. go, well, that was easy. You think, yeah, you always get that. Well, that was easy. Well, it was, it, we yeah. gave you the right equipment. I mean, you want to make an enemy of, of your wife or, you know, the guys out there, hand them a graphite shafted sandwich. They go get it out of the bunker. They'll hate bunkers. There's no weight behind it. But anyway, so the wedge itself, we want to get a forged type head, steel shaft, obviously our grip. You know, we'll talk about it here this, that in a little bit. Fit for you for length, lie angle, shaft flex, grip size, and so on. Okay. That's the way the wedges are. Now, the highest technology out there in the wedges, and you can go online with us, you can see more about this, is the full toe wedges that are designed by Callaway. Um, it's actually, the reason is, is they took what really was the professional wedges, which is a raw face with a spe specific cut metal to create maximum spin and feel across the entire face. So now, guys, year, a few years back, the pros would have wedges to create spin and they'd send we sell wedges to the public. They don't do that anymore. Now we can get you these wedges, and the last thing on that wedge is, and this is what's interesting, is the grind that's on the bottom of the wedge. The grind is how the club sits on the ground, and we used to have to order very specific grinds, like C grinds and so on for the clubs. Well, guess what? We have become so popular and so much in vogue, and it's become such a big deal that all the full toe wedges now have the C grind built in them. So there's no, there's no, there's no such thing else besides the C grind only. That's all you get. You guys, you can go online and watch more on the video on those wedges, and I would suggest that. But we can help you individually, too. We'll make sure your wedges are set perfect for you guys, okay? Yeah, Roger Cleveland, that yeah. video we did with Roger yeah, Cleveland. Yeah, I did a video, we did a video with Roger Cleveland on there who designs, I mean, Cleveland Golf, think about Cleveland. He's the wedge guru in the world. He works for Callaway now. He has for many, many years. He talks all about that and how we design wedges and so on. But just trust us, we can get a wedge, wedges that fit you guys perfect. All right. Working our way up, next thing, is irons, okay? And basically, this is how we fit irons. We're going to fit the length, the lie angle, the shaft flex, and the grip size of irons, okay? Now, 
Being more specific about irons, okay, besides those common characteristics is the next thing we're going to do on the irons themselves is we're going to recommend a particular width of sole. And the width of the sole really is a variance of how fast you swing the club and how much divots you make, okay? Because the more divots you make, so let's say you're a, a very, very good golfer and you swing it pretty fast, or you've got good speed on it and you make a big old divot. Well, you don't want a real wide sole in the club because it'll tend to bounce off the club ground for you. The wider sole, the wider the sole on the club, and actually to go that way, right there. Uh, right there. Yep, the back. wider the sole on the club, the more weight they can throw under the, under the ball. So for a person that makes a minimal divot or just a, a weak divot or no divot, you want a, a wider sole. For somebody who makes a really big, heavy, thick divot, you want a narrow sole. And then they have the middle line club where guys are kind of make some divot sometimes, some not, not time, some sometimes, some not time. And that's why that's the most popular club, the middle swipe sole. Middle, the middle of the road. So when we're talking about like Callaway here, which is obviously the highest technology, we have the Callaway Max OS, the Rogue Max OS. That's for somebody who takes basically no divot, needs maximum distance and forgiveness. We're looking at that club right there. Extremely hot club. In fact, you saw them test this, and I think they took that one professional. Um, who's the Australian professional, the big guy? Uh, Ron. Anyway, what? John Rome? Yeah, they took they, no, Ron, Spanish. You know, the, 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 they took the big guy, and they had him in Hawaii, okay? And they had him hit his, his they call it the players club, his, his players club. And he hit, he hit a seven at 170 yards. Boom. That was what he hit. Now, obviously, he swings it fast. They then handed him a Max OS in the same spot, and he hit it 240 yards from the same spot. It was 70 yards longer than his yeah. players club. And we're not going to see that. We don't swing as fast as those pros. But understand, no matter who's hitting this club, it's long. It's longer. And, they, and it's still got the height. They are long, and they've got the height. But so when we look at an iron, we're looking at a particular iron for you all. We're looking at to determine by the factors you send us, again, through our assessment, we're going to say, what's the width of the sole? Okay? And does that work for that individual by the width of the sole and so on? Now, when we do this, we also want to get the highest technology, okay? And so what I'm going to do right now on this is I'm going to have James talk to you for a couple minutes about the technology of the irons. You want to talk about this? Absolutely. Okay. Here, I'll give you yep. that one. Okay. I'm going to throw it on the ground again if I okay. don't. Okay. <laughs> right. the, the new Callaway irons, these new Rogue STs, come in four different models. Right. We talked about the, the, the base model, which is the Rogue Max. General, all-around, player's distance type club. It fits everybody. Right. Super forgiving. The big thing that Callaway's done now, they've gone to a new face technology. So they've got a 360 degree, 360 degree face cup where it's uh, welded around the face. There's tungsten. The word this year is tungsten. Yeah, you're going to hear this word There's a lot. 40 to 70 grams of tungsten weight here in the toe and the heel. There's more out in the toe now to offset the weight of the hosel. Right. So they put all this weight out here, creates a very super forgiving club that wants to get the ball airborne. You're going to hear us now, probably for the next 15, 20 minutes of the this webinar, the word tungsten is going to be brought up a lot. Yeah. Because the biggest thing and the reason why Callaway's technology went to that next level this year for the 2022 product is they started putting a tungsten weight in basically all their clubs. Everything. The only thing tungsten isn't in, and I, I, I think wedges. I'm right this, is putters and wedges. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else tungsten is in. And the reason they use tungsten is it's a very dense, heavy weight that they in small amounts. small amounts. So you can put it in the clubs. So if you cut this club in half, you see a tungsten insert in the back of this club. Okay? They put tungsten in there and they can now adjust and move a lot of weight around in the club. And so what you just noticed, what James just said there, is they start moving tungsten around this club to help with off-centered hits and help with weight get below the ball. So not only does it make the sweet spot bigger, it also gets the ball up in the air faster. That's where they can drop the weight, start moving it around. So the different irons have different weights in them to make them better, bigger sweet spots, more MOI, higher MOI. Like I like the word. Like I love the word. You guys are gonna be, you're gonna learn a lot tonight. Higher, more, higher MOI, and it helps guys. We're trying to get the club to go under the ball and shoot the ball up. The better the height, the more height we can get on this thing. The better, the more distance we'll get. The easier it is to hit, and when the easier it is to do that. Now we can actually get some really good distance without swinging the club 500 miles an hour. No. I mean, it's so gonna, it's going to maximize what you're going to be able to do. It maximize what you can do, okay? So, in, in the beautiful thing on this, what I've seen on these things, you hit that club a little bit thin. Don't quite make the divot you want. You still get great height because that weight's underneath the golf ball. 
Yep. So that's the big thing they've done in the clubs this year is not only have they used the AI technology, the artificial intelligence technology they came up with a couple of years ago, they've also now added this waiting system in these clubs to make the sweet spots bigger, make them more forgiving. One last thing they've done as well, we've, they've put that fourth club in the lineup, which is the oversized club, but lightweight. But lightweight. So for ladies... Ladies for, and our for, seniors. For seniors that swing it, you know, relatively slow in particular, and also some ladies. I mean, there's ladies that swing it fast, but yep. for a lot of our ladies, for our, our, our super seniors. Our I mean, beginners. be honest with you, let's be honest. This is what they did in the past. They had basically a player's club, an average player's club. So a player's club, I mean like a pro's club, a pro professional's club, an average player's club, and then they have like a senior club. That's what they had. Now they basically, because the demographics get older, they come with a super senior club. Yep. But that super senior club happens to work for most ladies also, and we also have ladies clubs. So, but, we, so we, we, I say we take that lighter head, right. we put a lighter shaft on it right. that's fit for you, the right length, right lie angle, right. right flex. Now all of a sudden, we're getting older, we're not getting faster, we're getting right. a little bit slower. Right. Now all of a sudden, we've created a little bit more swing speed because of the, the lighter, the lightness yeah. of the club. Right. So, and the other thing we'll do on that, and we'll, we'll talk to you guys about this, is that we match the shaft to you perfect. When we work with Callaway, we have the option of about <laughs> probably 75 to, it depends on the clubs, but 75 to 100 different shafts we can choose from. We're going to match that to you perfect, fitting the model, fitting your assessment that we get, and we can upgrade that shaft throughout the clubs at no additional price. Now, Obviously, there's a limit on that. There's, there's shafts that cost $600 a shaft we there's, can't put on there's there. Some there's some exotic stuff. There's some exotic stuff out there. And we always get that call from guys like, can you put this shaft in the way? And yeah, no. But 90% of the shafts we put in those clubs, you go somewhere else, you're paying an extra 50, 60 bucks a club for. Not with us. We sell so much product. Callaway, because here's what it comes down to. Callaway, Callaway knows the shafts we tend to go to, the higher quality shaft. And they order them in bulk for us. Now, all different flexes, I mean, there's 17 different flexes we deal with, but they order in bulk for us, so we're able to get those shafts at no additional cost in these clubs. That's why you go out in the range and some guys sit in a club next to you, the same club, and one behind you, same club. Um, you'll look, and they may have like a black shaft in it, and yours might be gold, and you're looking at that. Those are stock shafts they're swinging. Yours has been upgraded to a customized shaft for you and for your swing, obviously. I, what I find funny is through the years of doing this with Callaway, especially with, with right. our fittings, is... Our upgraded shafts have all of a sudden become Callaway's standard. Shaft. Sometimes, yeah, they put them in because because <laughs> because they buy because because they know they buy so many for us and they actually will make it a standard issue. But guys, trust me, we'll get a graphite shaft. It's a very high end shaft for you guys. Some people consider it upgraded at no additional cost within the club. So it's guys, the shafts, the engine of the club, and we're going to get it to match you guys perfect. But understand with an iron because well, I want to go on the next steps here. here you you got the. You got the 450 steel AI cup base. That's the AI technology. You got new tungsten weighting in there. And then you got the urethane microspheres, and we can talk about that. But basically what that is is that the reason they do this, okay, is we still want feel in this club. We could get a really hot, fast, no-feel club, and when that ball hits that face, it jumps off, and you got no feel in it. They put microsphere technology in the face. You can't see it with your eye, but it's in there. You actually, you can see it if you get a scope over it, can't you? you got like a magnifying glass, you can see it. But it's microspheres technology to help soften up the metal and make it with more better feel. Because the number one thing you get is you get these clubs that go forever, or they, you know, for guys, they go, man, I can't believe how good that feels. And that's what Callaway. The biggest thing we do with a the Callaway, they can make, anybody can make clubs longer, I say that. But can you keep the feel in the club? And you can keep the good sound, and that's what they're trying to do. The other thing they did with the microspheres, they've had them now for a couple of years, but if... You look at the new technology this year, they've increased it up to about the sixth or seventh groove. Yeah, that. right. So they've lifted so they it, moved up, it up. up. They moved it up. So it feels so much better. It, feel, it feels great. Yeah, it feels great. It's amazing. I used to hit, I mean, in my younger days, I'd hit a forge type club. And it was this really soft feel. And, you'd, and, and this is 15 years ago. And I'd put a cast iron in there, harder metal iron in there. And I'd hit it. Oh, man, that's clanky. It feels terrible. How can anybody hit that? You know, it, it didn't matter what company. Now all of a sudden, you take these forgiving clubs, you hit them and go, yeah, those things feel good. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Like, maybe I want to play that. That feels great. I mean, that, that's what they're trying to do, okay? So, um, that's the irons, guys. So, again, we're going to take your assessment, the questions you fill out for us, and we're going to recommend a particular iron for you guys. It could, it could be a forged iron. It could be a cast iron. 
Depends on your play, what your ability is. If you need forgiveness, if you need feel, we'll talk to you guys individually about that. We'll determine it by your assessment. You know, we'll figure that out. And then we'll give you recommendations back saying you need this, this, this in your bag, or you should have this in your bag. Now, for most golfers, for most of the public we deal with, for most of the people that we fit, they should only be carrying a six iron, seven iron, eight iron. They're, everything above that six iron should be hybrids, okay? It should be a, a hybrid-based club that's easier to hit. So working through the bag, the next club we have is hybrids. Hybrid. Now, hybrids, the recommendations for hybrids is going to be based on how far you hit ball, how far you hit shots, or your swing speed, okay? okay. And I'm going to draw this up for you real quick here so you understand this. Okay, and then James is going to talk about the makeup of hybrids here. Okay? So, when you talk about fitting, okay, and the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put irons. So this is irons, this is hybrids, and this is fairway woods. So, a two iron, okay, will equal a two hybrid, which basically equals a three fairway wood, okay? So if you want to compare the clubs across the board, that's what you're looking at. Now, a fairway wood is built to fly, and when it hits the ground, rolls for distance. It rolls out, okay? It's going to roll and roll and roll. So yes, this club will be longer than these because of the roll, but in flight-wise, they're very equivalent, okay? A two hybrid is built to fly and stop relatively fast, faster than an iron. A two iron is obviously, I'll be honest with you, they don't even make two irons anymore. You know nobody makes them because they're so hard to hit. Because this club is so much more forgiving. Even the guys that swing the fast in the world don't hit two irons anymore. Okay? But I'm gonna show you how this works across the board. Now, you got a three iron. A three iron equals a three hybrid, which basically equals a five wood, between a four and a five wood. Okay? So, right now, now here's the problem. Because of the ease of hitting hybrids, most people don't have enough speed to hit that three iron. Nobody has enough speed at two iron. You won't get the three iron off the ground because of the limited width of the sole, no weight underneath the golf ball, but you can get a three hybrid off the ground and you definitely can get a five wood off the ground. So for a majority of our students, they're into a five wood or three hybrid, but even that five wood, they want that maximum roll, they're gonna go with the five wood. They want that fair five fairway wood. But I just want you to kind of see how this equates. Three iron, three hybrid equals a five wood. Now we got the four iron equals a four hybrid equals basically a seven wood. Okay, now this is where we start talking to our students. Most of our students will choose the hybrid. They don't have enough speed to hit that appropriately. And but when they're hitting that club, they want it to stop when it hits the green. They don't want it to roll a lot. So, so they're hitting it for maybe 170, 180, maybe 190, you know, whatever it is. They, they can get to the green, but they want it to stop when it hits the green. So they'll go. Now we got a five iron equals a five hybrid equals a nine wood. And you guys kind of see how this works. Now we got a six iron equals a six hybrid equals basically 11 wood. And may as well throw the seven and yeah. eight hybrid. We, got, we got a seven. We got a seven <laughs> iron, seven hybrid. You know, guys, you see this. I mean, there's 13 woods out there, but there's a few of them. Equals down. Now, make this simple for y'all because we're going to talk hybrids now. We are going to make a recommendation of which irons, which hybrids, and fairy wood you should hit in your bag. So let's say you had a gentleman or a lady who, who hit a nine iron 100 yards. Well, that person who hits a nine iron 100 yards is going to want a five wood, no three wood. They will hit a five wood off the ground further. Yes. They need that loft. They'll hit a five wood. We'll recommend a four hybrid, a five hybrid. We'll even recommend a six hybrid for them. And then we'll start with a seven iron on down. That's for a person that hits a nine iron like 100 yards. Now, let's say you hit a nine iron 120 yards. Okay. Well, we're going to recommend you're still not into a three wood. You're still a five wood, a four hybrid, a five hybrid. Now we'll go to a six iron for you. Okay, because you'll be able to hit a six iron. But again, this is we're going to base this on your assessment to tell you the breakdown of the what bag you should carry. Okay, the print underlying principle of this number one is unless you have a very high swing speed, you should not be hitting a three wood. Five woods off the ground will go further. It's give you the loft to get you the maximum height and the maximum roll. The five wood will go further than the three wood. The second thing is, hybrids are much easier to hit than irons. They have wider soles. You can hit them up in the air easier. James talked about that in a second. We need to carry some hybrids in the bag, okay? 
If you can't hit hybrids, work on your technology. Work, you know, and guys, if you let's say you've worked on hybrids for two or three years and you just give up on them, we can get some fairway woods in there instead. They're, they may be even a little easier for you to hit because they're wider, but they won't stop as fast on the green. That you want them to stop faster when you're approaching these greens, and then obviously we'll work on which irons you should be carrying. Okay. Anything else you want to throw on that? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. One thing I, I do when I've got you in person, one thing I like to look at as, as part of the talk I, I do is how what's the longest iron that you're able to hit the green and have it stop? Yeah. yeah. And if you you come to me and say, James, listen, I, I love my sixth iron, but I have to land it. 10 yards short of the green and let it roll on, then I'm going to say you need to put a hybrid in your bag. Six hybrid because you, it'll, you it'll, change it. It'll go higher easier. Yep. You'll get the height easier and it'll stop faster because of that height. Guys, think about when you hit a ball, if you're hitting an iron, okay, and I'm going to race a couple of these lines, but you hit an iron, let's say you hit a six iron and it comes up and does this and then comes down. Well, when it hits, it's still going to roll out some. Well, all of a sudden you hit that six hybrid and it goes higher because of the lower weight of the ground. Now, it's not, it shouldn't go a whole lot further. It will because the height will make it go a little further. You'll, but that height will stop faster. Remember, when you get the appropriate height of the shot you should be hitting, whether it's iron or a hybrid, it'll stop the appropriate, it'll stop pretty quick. What people don't realize is that they hit irons, they'll get the appropriate height and the ball rolls out too much. Height is also distance. That's why most people hit the equivalent hybrid a little bit longer than the equivalent iron because they get the height easier, which gives them more distance. Okay, so let's talk for just a couple minutes. Again, I wanted to kind of throw that out to you guys about hybrids. In hybrids right now, the biggest thing in a hybrid is that is it's got a wider sole in general than an iron, so that when you're hitting an iron, we just grab an iron here. Yeah. Just normal so guys, this is a forgiving iron here. Who knows, that's considerably wider. That's three times as wide. So they can now throw more weight underneath the golf ball with their tungsten, here we go. Here we go, tungsten again, to get the ball up in the air faster, okay? So hybrids have a very low center of gravity to get the ball up faster when you're, either when you're making a divot, not making a divot, just scraping the grass, that's the way hybrids are set up, okay? Other, other critical issue we have to deal with when we're talking about hybrids, and be careful when you're looking at your hybrids, they have to be fit for lie angle. Listen to what he just said there. Hybrids must be fit for a lie angle, just like your irons, like your wedges, they've got to be fit for lie angle. Callaway is one of the only companies in the world that adjusts lie angles and hybrids. I can give you the long story behind that, but that's why we deal with Callaway so much, because a lot of our guys hit a lot of hybrids. Most guys they, or gals that we teach have a four hybrid, five hybrid, sometimes a six hybrid, seven hybrid. Some have, some carry three hybrids. They have a lot of hybrids in the bag. I carry a three, four, and five hybrid. Okay, and I, the five goes in and out, but I, yep. do, I carry three, four, five hybrid. What do you carry? Uh, I've got a uh, three, four, and I interchange my four iron and my four hybrid, yeah. depending so on what I'm trying we're, to do. We're, we're I will throw a two hybrid in there in times when it's really windy out. So yeah. I potentially could have up to four or five hybrids in my bag. Well, guess what? If that line goes and fits you, I'm heel digging, ripping those hybrids left every time. In fact, yeah. I will hit demo hybrids that aren't hit for line angle. I can't do it. I can't do it. If they're not a fit for lie angle, they will heel dig and turn on you and you will hate your hybrids all the time. You'll get that feeling. You, you know, you get that hard feeling all of a sudden oh. they sting. Yeah, it stings. And it's like, I hate these. I hate my right. hybrids. I hate and my what hybrids. what happens is, and I see this all the time, a guy will take a normal hybrid on the range. Just maybe it's soft. Maybe it's a little damp out. Or maybe whatever it is. The ground's real soft. Or maybe it's in the first cut of rough. And he hits that hybrid and goes, man, this is great. And then all of a sudden he goes on a tight fairway or a tee box, like a, a, a range that's cut really tight yeah. or a little hard pan. Or, you know, you'll get on that and you'll hit and all of a sudden it's like, that's straight left. That's just pulling straight left to me. I hate this thing because all of a sudden you get a tight line that heel digs and you got no chance. So when we get lie angles, lie angles for hybrids will be adjusted for you when you call us and order the club. The lie angles will be set for you. No matter what hybrids you get for us, it will be set for you for lie angle. And we guarantee you that. Yeah, okay? and, we're, and when we go through the fitting process and we're working with you is there are some hybrids in the lineup that are – Cog adjustable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got, uh, we've got one of the super hybrids yeah. here. It's Let's got see. an adjustable cog. Right. I can't flatten that one. So my, my shorter players, I'd love to put one in their bag. But, 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 here, but, but here's it. the other deal on this. We get it adjusted for you. They will adjust it for you guys in the cog and the fitting. So you guys don't need to adjust it at home, but it will be set for you, okay? And that's the big thing right now. Yeah. So we're going to make sure the lie angle is adjusted for you. They'll do it at the plant and it's set. You don't need to do anything outside of that when you get it. Okay? Don't, don't mess with it. Don't mess with it, right, okay? <laughs> okay. It will be fit for you, okay? Again, we're talking new hybrids now. Tim already talked about the new 
word of the day. It's tungsten. Again, it's out on the toe. It's back off the face, designed to give you maximum forgiveness, maximum distance. Uh, the other thing you're seeing now with the hybrids, they've, they're bringing in the driver technology, where they're bringing right. in the speed frame, where they're making the the crown of the hybrid is the weakest part of the club. It looks like the crown of any right. hollow body type club. So they're trying to work that speed frame to make it so that the top part of the club, the the, the weakest part, mm -hmm. doesn't expand anymore. Right. So now, same same hit, faster ball speeds, more forgiveness, right. faster ball speeds equals you more. You guys have probably all heard, if you haven't, you can do a little research on this, what they call the AI jailbreak technology. And basically what that is, is a, it's a frame they built around the center of the club for the driver. So when you hit the center of a driver, it expands out and in that gives you the fur furthest hit off the driver. What they realized on a hybrid, because the hybrids are smaller faces here and thinner faces, they took that same AI technology putting the toe in the heel. So what it did, because guys, it doesn't yeah, expand yeah. and contract as James was talking about as much on this driver, or on this hybrid compared to a driver because it's a smaller face. So they didn't need that AI technology speed frame in the middle because it's so small. So what they did is they put in the toe and the heel. So what that means is, in layman's terms, toe and heel hits go a lot further. So as you start hitting off the sweet spot, they increase the MOI in this. So guys, if you hit a half inch off center of an older hybrid, you might have lost 15, 20 yards. If you hit a half inch off center on this, you might lose five yards, maybe 10 yards. They put the jailbreak technology, the AI technology on the extremes of this club. They also threw the tungsten in the bottom on the weights and towards the toes and the heel. So basically, again, Layman's terms here. James is the expert on the layman's terms on this deal. Lower weight, bigger sweet spot of this club. That's why you're seeing they call it the long, one of the longest hybrids out there. But the biggest thing, this neck on this allows us to, at the company, at Callaway, when we get adjusted, they can adjust Langle for you. Now, hybrids tend to run a little flatter anyway, the way the hybrid is set. So your clubs might be two degrees flat. The, the hybrids might be one degree flat. Your clubs might be one degree flat. The hybrids might be standard. You guys, you'll see that. We work that out for you guys, okay? We will set that for you all, okay? The right. uh, other thing with the newer hybrids that are coming out now, they're going down a lot. They're going right. down to the eight hybrid. Yeah, they have up to an eight hybrid. Play is going to love us. Yeah, so <laughs> a lot of people out there like a six hybrid, seven hybrid, eight. So we can go down through an eight hybrid for you guys, okay? It's, you, get a, you can get a three hybrid, four hybrid, five, all the way down to an eight. Well, again, we'll talk to you individually about that. Okay. You have people out there who hit drivers 300 yards and they're like, man, I carry a two and three hybrid. I have guys who hit drivers 190 yards max and they love the eight hybrids. They, they call it the Ocho. It's a favorite club in their bag. I mean, and, and Callaway's very proud of their Ocho. They, 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 a lot of the guys, the inner workings of Callaway, the guys that play golf to work at Callaway, it's a favorite club in their bag is their Ocho. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we can help you. So again, length, Lie angle, which worked radically together, length is a variable of lie angle. Shaft flex, grip size, and so on all have to be fit for you, and we do that for the hybrids, okay? Now, the other thing that James talked about there, what he was stating there is, yes, when you have certain hybrids, the big, here's the biggest thing that happens with the public, is they go buy a hybrid or they get a hybrid off the shelf, okay? And number one, it's not fit for lie angle, but let's say it's close. Let's say it's close. Well, if it's not fit for length also, you're double dinging yourself because not only is a lie angle off with the length off, that magnifies the lie angle being off. So, and I'll be giving an example of this. Let me, let me show you this. Give me one of your clubs, James. <laughs> okay, this club fits me perfect, okay? So when I set up, and this is an example of this iron. So when I set up, I put this club flat in the ground and I set up over this. Right now, the length, the lie angle, obviously shaft less grip size, that fits me perfect. So all I got to do is put the club flat, push it forward. I'm set up perfect in the single plane system. Okay. This club fits me perfect for length and lie angle. Okay. Now, obviously, James is much taller than me. In fact, he's standing next to me. He puts his arms, reach your hand up. I mean, there's a three to four inch difference there. I mean, James is six foot three, six foot, yeah, six foot three. We're shrinking. I'm five foot <laughs> ten. But no, it's a big difference there. So now, this club is fit for James. So you got this club here. So notice, both of them are seven irons. There is a over an inch difference there. So number one, big time length difference there in the club. But here's the bigger thing is, this lie angle is also adjusted for his geometry, the geometry of the single plane swing for James. So when I set up over this and go out, and now I'm in a perfect single plane system, look at the toe of that club. It is completely off that ground. James, if I hit this club right now and I hit it perfectly, the perfect swing, because I'm a perfect golfer. Mm -hmm. You are. Laugh at me. 
Okay, I'm a good golfer. I hit that. Where's that ball going to go? Left. How far left? Long. Long left. How many yards left do you think it goes? So if I hit it perfectly. Right now, slant, with that, probably 20, 25 yards left. Yeah. yeah I would I potentially could pull this thing in the hazard yeah. on a bounce. And that's that. that's if you didn't heel dig it. Yeah, yeah. That, that, and if I heel dig it, it's going to be worse. Okay. So for me to fit in this perfect, I would literally have to lift my hands here. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no way. My spine angles off. I have no, my spine tilt's terrible. My shoulder tilt's terrible. Um, I'm way too close to the golf ball just to get that club flat in the ground. And back, so my back's kind of hurt right now trying to do this. There's no way I can get set properly. The reason I bring that up, because when we start getting to hybrids, we start getting to irons and wedges and so on, length is dependent on lie angle. Lie angle is dependent on length. Exactly. So obviously, James is a longer, more upright club than me because he's taller and his wrist to floor is a lot higher. Okay, now, you had James here, and his arms were as long, long as mine, so he had really long arms. So James played basketball for a living for, for a few years because he's got really long arms. Let's say he did that. Well, guess what? The club would be shorter and the line would be changed for that accordingly. Okay? we do the assessment. We'd fix that for him. But anyway, I want you to understand that because the biggest thing we see with hybrids and irons is people think they can adjust the line, but they don't adjust length. It doesn't matter. The line goal is directly affected the length. Okay? Directly affected. Okay. I want, I want to throw one different word okay. at, one different word out while we're doing this. Standard. There yeah. is no uh, such no thing standard. as standard. Mm. I'll have more people come up to me and say, well, I went to my yeah. local guy and I'm standard. Well, number one, there's no industry standard. None. Titleist, Mizuno, Ping, they're Guys, all different. I'll tell you right now, um, in every club is different within the industry. E even, even within in, the, in the, the same manufacturer. Yeah. Yep. Guys, you get an, you call us up and say you want an Apex iron. It's a forged type iron. It's a beautiful iron, you know, player's type iron. The standard line will have 61 degrees. Now you call me up and you say, this is just standard. I mean, we're saying industry standard. You call up and you want one of these here, one of these, the new ones. Standard 62 degrees. So we're a degree off within yeah. the company. And even with the oversized one, they're 62 and a half. Yeah, it's, guys, so when we submit an order for you all, we don't say one inch short of standard. No, 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 no. We say we want 61 degrees, 38.5 inches. We put the numbers in, and that's how we order the clubs. So it doesn't matter what club you get, as long as it matches the numbers we're submitting. Absolutely. That's what you got to do. So, and the reason James bring this up is because the number one question we get for people that are trying to fit their own clubs is, well, what is it compared to standard? We don't know what club you're looking at. We have no clue. What I mean, you've got a five-year-old club that's been fit by somebody else. I don't know how they built the club. I don't know what the standard was. I don't know how they compared that to standard. I don't know the length. Because, guys, a half-inch to quarter-inch difference is a major difference deal in line goal. The worst thing I could do for you is you call me up and say, hey, i got a pink club that I want fit. And I'm, I'm going, great, I'll help you the best I can. And then you sit there and you go, I do the assessment, and he goes, oh, it looks like I'm two degrees flat. And he takes those clubs, he goes, bends them two degrees flat. Well, guess what? Maybe that club was a half inch longer. The two degrees flat's irrelevant. irrelevant. Totally, it, it's, it's in, it doesn't matter. Let's say it was an inch shorter. Now the line goes, it, guys, it's, it's all dependent. That's the biggest problem we deal with. It's very, very, very hard for most people to adjust clubs because of this. We'll give you the lengths. We'll give you the line goals. We'll do that, but they all have to be done. You can't just go do line goals. You can't go just do length. You can't go just do grab, grip size. You got to do it all. So when that individual then calls him and says, I'm going to adjust my own clubs, which is great. We'll help you. But he goes, um, I don't, do I need to do the whole thing? It's yes. like, yes. And he goes, well, how close do I need to get? Exact. Exact. Okay. Let's go to the next yeah, one. Close enough is not a word. Right. Use. Close enough is not a word in clubs. It is not. All right. Let's talk fairway woods. Fairway woods. And this is actually, fairway woods in the industry have been pretty cool the last couple of years. But I will tell you right now, Callaway is very, 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 very proud of their fairway woods they've come out with this year because of the distance of that club. In fact, it's pretty crazy what they've done with their fairway woods this year. And they're actually calling it the bat wing technology. And, it's, and we're going to talk about this. So this is the new Rogue ST Max, the Rogue ST um, fairway woods. Okay, And basically what it is, is they've taken their jailbreak technology and they put it in what they call bat wing technology. And you can see it. The weight on the ball in this club kind of looks like bat wings. So what they've done is they put tungsten in the face, they put tungsten in the club. Here we go with the weighting. They've now put this weighting that makes the sweet spot bigger, okay, in the club to go from the toe to heel to give it optimal distance off miss hits or off center hits. The miss hits are better. Miss, miss hits, hits are better. better. In fact, they're going to tell you right now that, and they're seen longer than this, if you compare this to any fairy wood out there in the past, and there's some really good fairy woods out. Stuff we had at Callaway last year was great. 
But you take this out there right now and you compare it, you'll get up to 10 yards longer in each fairway wood. That's what they're claiming because of the technology. So that's what their AI technology is finding, is the distance they've added on these fairway woods. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and the bat wing, not only you've got the weight here, this isn't all the tungsten weight. There's a little tiny bar in here that you right. have the tungsten weight. But you also have these stability wings that are coming off the back to help it on the ground. It rides across the ground and into your divot a little bit better. Right. So the, the ease of hitting it through ease the ground. Right. It. And they've actually put weight in the toe and heel. So again, tungsten weighting increases the size of the sweet spot. They call it the back wing technology with AI technology, long, long, long. Now, the two things about fairway woods, and we'll bring this up. Number one, length. Shaft flex, grip size, you know, what club you want, you know, what club you're going to hit, so on. You know, so if you, whether you carry five wood, seven wood, you know, we're going to help you with that. Line goals and hybrids, there is a line goal in there, but they are not adjusted, excuse me, in fairway woods. Line goals and fairway woods are not adjusted. And the reason they're not is because the rounded type sole on a fairway wood is not necessary. So notice, it's not real flat like a hybrid. It's more rounded on the, on the club, so it's not necessary to adjust the line goal of a fairway wood. And also... We bring in, because we're now dealing with a larger head size, we're bringing in gear effect. Right. So the face of a fairway wood is not flat like your hybrids are, right. or like your irons are. There's a little bit of bulge and roll, which means if you look at the face from heel to toe, the face comes out a little bit. If you look from crown to sole, the face rolls out a little but, bit, and that allows us to... But let me bring this up. Length is adjusted. Yes. So we'll, when that club is sitting flat and looks relatively fat and flat in the ground, if you get one that's too long, it's let's say it's an inch and a half too long, that toe's going to come up because that's too long for you. So or if you get one that's too short, we don't see this very often, no. the toe's going to be into the ground. So we're going to adjust the length for you so the center of this club is going to sit in the ground. And that's the best way I can put that. You don't need to adjust lying on this as long as we adjust length. As long as that's right. Right. Correct. Now, in that, it's good, guys, so understand that. Length and line angle are dependent. On fairway woods, they don't adjust line angles, but we absolutely adjust lengths. And that gets you to get the center of that club sitting on the ground. Don't need adjust line angles because of how we described with the toe and the heel and the way the club sits on the ground. We got yep. that? We're All good. right, guys, we're going to get into drivers here. We're going to go over that real quick here with drivers. But one thing I want to bring up on this, and probably have some graphics we'll throw up on this, is understand something about technology in golf now. And I want to just throw this out, and, and James, get ready for this driver here. Technology in golf is this way. People now, I was just out in, in, out in uh, Northern California a couple, you know, a couple days ago, and I was working with a gentleman um, who obviously, he lives out in, in Cyprus, and he's across here from Pebble Beach, and I was giving him some lessons, had a blast. And I walked into a studio that he had built in his, in his house. He had two TrackMans. He had a SIM simulator. He had two TrackMans. He had the, the cave. He had, guys, <laughs> the technology he had was crazy. And the reason I bring this up is, if I hand him a new driver, and he had last year's driver, this guy can put numbers on that driver like this. It's not just the professional fitters that can do it like we can. The public can do it now. So he can give me spin rates, right to left, left to right, back spins, side spins. But more importantly, how far the driver's going. So he can now take a picture of where that ball's hitting on that club face and give it the exact yardage within a few yards, within a yard or two, of... How we hit that driver. And then he can go hit 20 in a row and get an average for that. That's all great. But he can then take last year's driver and compare it. So what would happen if this year's driver was shorter than last year's? It, it can't happen. Well, guys, this is what the golf industry, and in particular Callaway, does on a multi-billion dollar... Wait, put it this. This is all they do. They test it again and again and again. Guys, they have... Four, what we call, they're, they're Iron Byrons, they're testing systems. Four systems running full-time, 24-7. We go out there and watch it, and that's just in their out external office. They got an internal one, they have another four. They're continually testing the technology because they have to have this year's club longer and more forgiving than last year's club. And yes, I'll, get, I'll tell you guys a little secret right now. They're working on next year's clubs right now. Two they're, years from now. Probably two years from now. So, and everybody, and the reason I bring this up, I know I... I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm beating on a horse here, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But everybody's going to call me up and say, is this year's club longer than last year's? Yes. Is it more forgiving? It has to be. Because anybody can look at the numbers now. You know, 10 years ago, somebody could have lied to you. Nobody could have those numbers except for these big, high companies. Now everybody can look at these numbers. The whole world can look at them, okay? 
So I can go take it, two drivers, put them out and test them. You can, anybody can. So is today's driver longer than last year's? Yes. Is it more forgiving? Yes. So they've got to come up with ways like adding tungsten, like doing microsphere faces, like add, you know, adding a lighter crown on the top. They've got to figure out a way to make it longer. That's their job. And that's what they've done. And then they've got to make a way to make it durable, so it'll last. They've got to make a way to have a great shaft, which we do. And then obviously our responsibility is the fit. So Callaway's responsibility or whatever company, give me the highest technology, give me the highest quality. Our responsibility fit to you perfect. So now you got the highest technology, the highest quality, fit to you perfect. Now the excuses are out of the bag. Because yes, if you don't have the newer technology, yes, you do not have the longest equipment or the most forgiving. Now, before we get in the driver, because this is the questions we always get, how often should you replace a driver? I'm not going to tell you to go replace a driver every year. Most people can't afford that. Okay? Some people can, most people can't. But I'm going to tell you to replace a driver every two to three generations. So every two to three years. That's how dramatic the technology changes. If you have a three-year-old driver, a four-year-old driver, your driver is, yes, considerably shorter and less forgiving than this new driver. Also, you're gonna have you gotta take the factor of fatigue. How often do you yeah. play? Yeah, if, if you if you hit it a lot, you're gonna fatigue the driver. I mean, I haven't even got there. Irons, hybrids, well, actually hybrids is more like the driver now. But irons every at max three to four generations. At max. So three to four years. Now, do I have a lot of people that get new stuff every year? Yes. They want the highest technology? Yes. Is this better than last year's? Yes. Is it longer, more forgiving? Yes. But if you're coming, calling me up and saying, I have a set of clubs that's 10 years old, should I have changed them? Probably should change them twice by now. Maybe three times. I have a driver that's five years old. Yeah, you probably should change it once or twice by now. If you, guys, that's just the way it is. The money that's spent on the technology in golf is crazy. And you guys can, I know they have that and you can look it up, but James and I get to go look at the inner workings and get in behind the scenes in that. It is crazy. It's crazy, but it's crazy the technology they do. Remember how much they spent on the new AI computer? It was uh, fifty-four million yeah. to start. So the computer that the the AI computer they had just to get it online, mainframe it to get the technology in this was fifty-four million, and they said they put over a hundred million into it now, yeah. um, adding the new software and so on. And that's guys. The first time I saw that AI computer, which was two and a half years ago, almost three years three. ago, now, three years ago now. They presented to the kind of the higher ups in Callaway, and I was lucky to get invited there. And they, I sat there and and. We call him Doc Hawk. Dr. Hawk now came out and he goes, we've done this. We've come up with this computer. And he looked at it and he goes, the golf industry is now, the rest of the golf industry is about 20 years behind because of the technology in this. Yes, the rest of the golf industry is trying to catch up, but they haven't got the Callaway yet. And, you, and you're seeing it. So um, listen, again, I just wanted to bring that up because it's the number one question we get is, is it longer? Is it more forgiving? And how often should I change them? Okay. Now let's talk about um, drivers. All right. The new Rogue Max. New, new Rogue Max. And you guys, you're seeing this out there. I mean, you guys have seen it all on tour. The tour players are all hitting it. In fact, the first tour event, they had the 30 uh, guys out there in Hawaii. Um, 11 of them were hitting this club. Uh, 30 guys that were sponsored by everybody. And all but one of the Callaway guys had this club in their hand. Um, John Rahm finished second with this club a couple times now. They've already won. I think it's won four or five times on tour now. This is the club that's in the hand. If you are working and trying to play for a million-dollar event for first place, you think you want, might want the longest and potentially most forgiving driver in your hand, you're going to get it, and that's what they have in the hand. It's the same driver. Guys, the drivers they're hitting are not some unique, different thing they built for them. Nope, it's for them. For them for, it's the same head with the shaft flex, grip size, and so on. It's the same thing. Used to be. Used to be it wasn't. Uh, it is up now. Until about five yeah. years ago. And yeah, now, now it's the same club. It's the same club. So now, the biggest thing in the drivers, I'm going to talk about it, and I'll talk about the fit. We're going to fit you for length, shaft flex, We've got many, many, many options. We'll work with you individually. Grip size, loft of the driver. We're going to fit that for you guys. Okay? Length. Yeah, what's that? Length. Length, length. Yeah, length, 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 length. Now, you guys know right now that the USGA has, they're starting to put a regulation on length of the driver. Meaning if you go play in USGA events or PGA events, 46 is max. That's, it's, that ruling is a local rule. So it's not, it's not a rule. It's an all tournament. So you go play in your club championship, you go play in your, your ladies' day group, you go play in your, you know, your, your husband and wife tournament, you go whatever it is, or you know, your, your fun your barbecue circuit tournament on the side, you know, whatever it is, you're, you're, you can have whatever you want. You go play in a USGA event or PGA event, which I know it's very, very few people out there, but there's some watching this, you don't want to go over 46 inches. We'll work with you guys individually on length. We tend not to go over 46 anyway. 
That is based on your height, your wrist of floor measure, and so on. But we'll discuss with that individually, again, on your assessment. Okay, so the Rogue Max driver, the Rogue ST Max, is considered right now, and you saw it in the Golf Digest, they just published their hot list, is considered the longest and most forgiving driver out there. That was independent testing against all other clubs in the market. You guys can go look at it. Go look at it yourself if you want. It got the 20 out of 20 stars. It got the five-star rating. It got the highest rating by Golf Digest, okay, by independent testers. So it, but we knew that before that because it's tested throughout the, you know, as they do it. We knew that was going to happen. Okay. Now, here's why the technology and the driver. We'll go over this real quick with you guys. Again, here's that word again, tungsten. Right. We have that little gold bar in the back. Back. We have four models of driver we're dealing with now. Right. And for us, for our, our clientele that we're dealing with, the top end and the low end, we're not going to use. They've got, a, they've got a triple diamond, a low spin triple right. diamond, open face, um, Guys, not the, very forgiving. 90, 95% of our students, if they hit the triple diamond LS, they would keep, hit it off the map to the right. It looked like a yeah, double and, slice. And they wouldn't get in the air. Straight right. They wouldn't even get in the air. And right. then the other side of that, they've got the, the Max D. D, which is a draw base club. Uh, face is closed, internal mm. weighting of the, Guys, of the, the head. Is nothing closed. drives us crazier than have a student come into school and they got a D driver, a draw face driver, and whatever it is, and they go and they're trying to hit it and they're hitting it straight and they're slicing everything else in their bag or they're hitting everything straight and they're hooking the crap out of this driver. Yeah. Guys, you get a D face driver, a draw face driver, it's called a Max D or in any company or in this, and you work on your swing, you will hook the crap out of it. You will hook the crap out of it. We don't want that. So the middle two drivers are. The, Ma the Rogue Ma Max, Max and then the Max LS. LS. Now, the Rogue Max, S the Rogue ST Max fits 90 to 95% of golfers. Yeah. This is what's going to go in basically everybody's bag. And even Doc Hocknell, who was interviewed in, the, in Hawaii, who designed this driver, he's the godfather of this driver, said close to 95% of the industry will fit in the Rogue ST Max. Okay? This is the one that has all the technology built. It's basically a square face. It's, it's what we recommend for a majority of our students. Yes. Unless you have very, very high swing speeds, we're going to go with this. In other words, you have high swing speeds and you balloon the ball because you're creating so much spin, then that's maybe the max LS. We'll that's, do the assessment for you guys. We'll yes. tell you what you need. Okay. Yeah. In fact, out of all of us, me, James, all my staff, all of us are in the Rogue Max, ST Max, except for maybe... Brock. Rock, Brock and Ross. Yeah. And they swing the club upwards of 115, 120 miles an hour with the driver. Two young with studs. Young studs are cranking it, okay? So we're in the Rogue ST Max. Now, okay, talk about the driver head itself. Go ahead real quick. Here we go. Uh, again, uh, jailbreak technology, they've modified a little bit. Basically, they made it more forgiving. Uh, they've stopped uh, the crown from expanding. The biggest thing you're seeing now, the new drivers, your miss hits. Yep. Half an inch off center. No loss of ball speed. You get inch off center, there's less loss of speed. Right. But that's the big thing. They're speed right. tuned. Um, they talk about MOI, don't want to twist. It's, it's the factor of speed. Right. Your miss hits are faster. Pure and simple, miss hits are faster. Right. Guys, it's really the shape of the face. And we'll put some graphics up there. And you will see this, that it really gives you, you'll see that when you use the Epic Max, the, 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 Rogue, the Epic Max versus the Rogue ST Max. Epic was last and it was long. They've actually made it hotter off the middle of the club, or they've expanded the sweet spot to give you a longer miss hit off the face. Okay, it's the AI technology. Okay, um, so the biggest thing you see on this is that they've taken the weight, which is the tungsten weighting, and they've been able to optimize it in the driver head. So they put it back and low in the driver head. Yep. So now a good hit will launch a better speed for that. When you set up that club for you, it launched at better angles. It will hit. It will fly higher or fly better for you guys, but more importantly, it'll roll more for you guys also. Yeah. So it, it gives you an optimal launch and roll. Yeah, with, with the new heads, they're also reducing the, the backspin component right. Right. of the club. So what you're seeing now is they're trying to optimize the drivers. We talked about that high launch, low spin, where it stays in the air. Well, the other thing they're measuring now is the descent angle on the far end. Right. How does the ball come out of the... Out of, the, out of the sky towards the ground, and they're trying to maximize that descent angle, right. which, again, will maximize right. your roll character. Hey, guys, yes, there's an adjustable cog on here, but for a majority of our students, we're going to fit the law for you. It could be a 9, 10, 5, or a 12. Most people, it's a 10, 5. We're going to take that loft and put the correct shaft in there for weight, flex, okay? Guys, 
That's critical. That shaft is now gonna kick that ball into the right trajectory for your swing speed or the distance you hit shots in the right trajectory with that loft set accordingly. We're gonna take care of all that at the factory for you when they customize it. So when you get it, you won't need to touch it. And because it's amazing how many guys will take it, they Turk take off the head, they do an adjust, and they call me up and go, it doesn't fit me anymore. Really? It's set for you. Because guys, the cog adjustment is also based on the shaft flex and the weight. It's and all length. based together. So the length, the weight, and shaft flex, the cog adjustment, and the loft are set for you perfect. Okay? That's how we do that. That's what we do here. Okay? So when it comes out of that box, it's ready for you perfect. Don't touch it. It's good. Go hit it. Have fun with it. It's set for you perfect. The, the biggest question I see, we, we get the emails on it. Well, I need, more, I need more height. So they start playing with the cog adjustments. And I'll tell you from a technical standpoint right now, when you adjust the cog setting, it affects the spin rate of the golf ball. Right. It doesn't affect the launch angle. Right. When you need more height, work on your swing. Work on your swing. 99% of the time, the ball's too far back in your swing. You've got a descending blow. Work on your swing. We're going to set this up for the ideal setup for your assessment. You've hit it perfect with a good swing. Okay. Yeah, you can tweak it and turn. That's up to you guys. But bring it back to where we get it set up to you guys perfect because that's what you want to work to to get the perfect swing. Because, guys, remember, this club is going to be adjusted accordingly to the fairway wood, according to the hybrid, according to the irons, according to the wedges. Everything in the bag is going to fit appropriately. It's amazing how many guys will flip a club and they deal off their driver so it doesn't go so high, and then they can't hit a hybrid iron worth anything because they're casting it. Well, guess what? So the driver is decent, but everything else in the bag is terrible because they did some poor adjustment in the driver or vice versa. So we're going to set it to you all perfect coming out of that box, okay? Literally perfect on that box. We get that question a lot. All right. So um, I probably, we're probably well into this. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, we get a little over time. Well, James and I could talk about this forever. But guys, that's really from the, the putter all the way up to the driver. And the last question we get on this really is, is why we go with Callaway. I mean, guys, I used to, I was the number one seller, or well, James wasn't with me at the time. I was the number one seller of Adam's product in the world. And the reason, this was years and years ago, and the reason it was is because Adams came out with the first hybrids, and, and it was, the hybrid was a phenomenal tool for people who didn't swing the club really fast. Um, people didn't even know what a hybrid was at the time, and Adams came out with the hybrids, Barney Adams did, and it was amazing, and so we, did, we dealt with Adams because of the technology. And then we went from Adams, and then Adams kind of started falling out of business, they kind of went out of business, and we really went into TaylorMade, Cobra and TaylorMade. And it was because, honestly, TaylorMade and Cobra at that time were leaders in technology. I mean, it was, it was, they had great product. They had really high technology. It was really good. But that was about 12, 13 years ago, okay? And then all of a sudden, Callaway decided to ramp it up. And the last seven, eight years, maybe a little longer than that now. Nine or 10. Nine or 10. Yeah, it's, time flies. Callaway, uh, I, I can tell you right now, the people who used to work for Adams now work for Callaway. They, bought, they basically took everybody and put them in Callaway. They're running Callaway. They're right running now. Callaway. And they went crazy in technology. It was, we are going to be the leaders of the golf industry in technology. And technology for all players. Average players, below average players, above average players. So all of a sudden, it became the all, everybody's club. So now you got technology and players clubs and average players clubs and in below average players clubs. It's amazing. So if, and you guys can compare it. I, 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 if you guys, we say this a lot, and I tell us every time I get and talk to somebody in person, Go do some independent research if you want. Go just study technology and you'll see. So not only does Callaway back in technology, the quality of the product you're getting for the price you're paying superior. is by far superior. By far. We, you're not getting cheap shafts. You're not getting cheap club heads. You're not getting cheap faces in the clubs. This is superior to quality. And also they back their quality amazing. Yeah. I mean, I've had guys that have literally run over a driver with a cart. They, the ball bag falls off, they run over their bag, they snap their driver. And in two days, they have a brand new one because Callaway takes care of us like that. Crazy what they'll do for us. That's, that, I think, for me, I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Is their, their custom service is second to none. Second to none for us. Guys, we have, James and I have one and a half bodies, almost two, that work at Callaway for us full time, just taking orders. So we submit exactly what they want, and they process it. They make sure it's getting to the custom fitting section perfect. We don't trust just put it in a computer and hopefully someone picks it up. We put it to an individual at Callaway. They then review it. They, they double, triple check it. They submit it. They put it in for us. They're making sure everything's coming out right for us. We literally, that's how much work we do with Callaway. And it goes through the customs right. department. It right. doesn't come off the shelf. Right, stuff. it does not come, nothing, nothing comes off the shelf. And you'll know this. When you order a product from us, there'll be a slip of paper that comes in there, and it'll tell you exactly how the club was built. 
It's literally with every single club. It tells you exactly how it was built. So you can look at it. You can keep that in your own files. or just kind of fun to look at. But it matches what we have on file for you. Their thing is when you submit the fittings with us, we will have those forever. We'll have them on file forever. Now, if we get older, things might change, and I'll update them and stuff like that. I mean, we tend to shrink as we get older. I know that. That's why I think James used to be six foot four. Now he's probably six foot three. Then I, I used to be six foot. And that's, that's a lie. It's okay, but we shrink as we get Guys, we know that, okay? Some of us get arthritis as we get older. We know that. So things change with the club fitting. We will do the individual assessment with you guys in that. We will make sure the clubs are built to you perfect, okay? And use this for the trade-in, trade-up program. Right now, I submitted last year, I think it was like 6,000 orders or 7,000 orders. I don't know the number. But a third of our orders had trade-in clubs with them. We had thousands and thousands of trade-in clubs, okay? And everybody gets a trade-in bonus, public and private, okay? What I mean by private are members. Everybody gets a bonus. The members get the highest bonus, okay? So even if you're a public, you're not a member of our gold membership, which you should be, but you're not, and you call me up or you email us, we'll take care of you guys. We'll get you additional money for that trade-in. Gold members get the ultimate bonus. They get the highest bonus, and they get the best pricing in the clubs, okay? Then last thing, if you buy more than one club from us, we'll do package pricing for you guys. The more clubs you buy from us, the better the deals we can get for you guys. We have all this worked out with Callaway, okay? We have it all worked out. So anyway, you want to throw anything else out? I know we've gone really long. I, mean, I think the biggest thing to take from this is make sure your clubs fit. Look at the technology you have in your bag. And if you have any questions, email you us. know where we are. Get a hold of us. Guys, email us. Tim G at GravesGolf.com. James B at GravesGolf.com. Tim G at GravesGolf.com. James B at GravesGolf.com. Tim Graves, James Bell. Pretty easy to know. I know we've gone probably about an hour and a half tonight, so it's a little bit longer. But guys, to us, I mean, we'll, we'll, James, I'll talk for... Hours and hours and hours. I mean, Don't get me on the range. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> We're going to go on and on. Guys, get the excuses out of your bag. The biggest thing we got to do is get the excuses out of your bag. I need to have the confidence that when I'm out there, whether I'm practicing the game, playing the game, doing whatever, the bag fits me perfect. For me. Not for James. Not for the guy over here. For me. Yep. It's all excuses out of the bag. Let us work with you. Let us put poor gas in the fire. Guys, let us pour gas in this fire for you. You want the ultimate accelerator. You want to get better faster. Let's get the clubs that fit you. Let's get some good, nice, high technology in there so when you're hitting the longest drives that you can hit, you're hitting the easiest fairways you can hit. The, the hybrids fit you perfect, okay? Let's, let's get that in your bag for you guys. Let us know how we can work for you guys. Anything else you got for tonight? Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate uh, you tuning in for the last yeah. hour and a half with us. It's yeah, great. Let's appreciate you guys being with us tonight. You got any questions, throw us some emails. Um, we will also take additional questions in the next webinar we do. Um, we will answer some of those questions during the webinar. But guys... Look at our school schedule for this coming up, this upcoming summer. It's going to be out. It's out. It'll Next, fill fast. It's going to go fill up. Yeah, James fills up those schools really, really fast. Second thing in there, watch our on demand. We have a two hour, um, the, um, the online school, online school 2.0, February 28th. Be watching for that. Get on our on demand. We've got thousands of guys who are on on demand every single day and loving it. We just had our school and they were loving the on demand. All our instructional and material. And more coming. Them. And more coming. Every day we've got more stuff put on there, okay? So guys, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll talk to you real soon.